All right. Let's see here. Okay, so I think I am live. If you guys can hear me and see my screen, let me know in the chat, and we are going to get this sucker started. So I wanted to go ahead and do this video on a Sunday afternoon. And, um, you know, I thought about just doing it to people in my community, um, but then I was like, well, you know, why don't I just give an update out to everybody? So this video is going to be for people that are currently working with us and our team, and then also just the general public out there. Okay, so come on in. Come on in. Make sure if you haven't had a chance, make sure you grab something. You know, I'm going with a LaCroix this time. But if you're a tea person, a coffee person, it's still, you know, 120, one, or it's 140 Eastern. So it's still early enough for a coffee. So I'm going to go through and share my screen through this. And, you know, we're going to go uh, into some pretty interesting things that are going on, I think, in the tax and accounting world right now. So, you know, really, honestly, at this point, what better do you have to do? I mean, what, what, what else are we going to do? We're going to just hit another... Now, I saw the funniest video this morning. This woman was on, you know, Amanda showed me it was an Instagram post. And this woman just went outside every door in her house and just started yelling, I'm bored. And then went to the back door, I'm bored. And then she went to like the garage, I'm bored, right? Poor lady. I mean, if she knows what's in for her, that brain is going to mush if it hasn't already. But if you're paying attention, I mean, the world is sort of rebuilding itself. The world is sort of rebuilding itself. And, you know, I'm in the this industry of tax and accounting firms. And so that's kind of what I stick to and what I talk to. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But there are so many things that have changed, so many things that have changed, so many opportunities, so many shifts. And I think, you know, if you're willing to do things a little bit differently, there is a big opportunity to adapt in, you know, really any industry that you're in, um, you know. A lot of people think, oh, you know, this is going to be done in a, in a month or two or whatever. And I can tell you, even if, you know, the virus starts going down in a month or two, the new world that we are all living in um, will probably go on, it, it appears to me, and, you know, it will probably go on for quite some time. Um, you know, a year, two year, three year, I don't know how long the economic issues are going to continue. But within that, you know, if you have a tax and an accounting firm, okay? What are you going to do during that time frame now that we all have to rebuild our lives? You know, and I was talking to some people yesterday and I could just see they didn't in different parts of the country that they didn't really want to accept this new world. You know, they're still going out and living life as normal. They're kind of going out and doing things. They think that this is going to be done in a month or two and it's just kind of bothered by it. And, you know, what I think is interesting is like a lot of people are going through great pain, right? But if you're fortunate enough to be going through mild pain or no pain, or you actually have opportunity, I think you owe it to yourself to seize that as much as possible. And I think there are many different industries right now where things are going well for them. Um, and one of those is tax and accounting. There's a lot of opportunities. I mean, there is massive financial distress out there right now. And like, right now, if you're a tax and you're an accounting professional, like it's a call to action. Like if you, if you have not been out there talking one-to-one -one and, you know, with these business owners, they are getting absolutely crushed. So I wanted to kind of go over today, like in this niche, right? In this industry, tax, accounting, wealth management, and so on. Like what, what, what can you do right now over the next 18 months? Like how can you start to rebuild your life? And I can tell you, Hundreds of my clients, and I'm, I'm going to explain this to you. You'll, you'll see this here in a second. Hundreds of my clients in the month of March and in the month of April, they will because we're only on the 5th, but hundreds of my clients have served more business owners than they've ever served before, You know, onboarded more people, grown their businesses, even hired employees back that have been fired, hired more people than they ever hired before. And so when these sort of shifts come into the economy, you know, wherever there's a dark age, there's a golden age. And I know everybody has that propensity to say, well, you shouldn't be selling and you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't try to grow your business. And But the reality of it is, guys, there's 10 million people been laid off in the last two weeks. If any of you can create jobs, I think you owe it to society to do everything in your power to make that happen. There are people out there that are in really scary situations. I mean, this is not sort of a normal, you know, 
<clears throat> not a normal recession or depression. This is a 10 million people in two weeks. If you if you guys start to look at some of the numbers, this is, you know, I I for most of my life have been more of a pessimistic guy. Like I would say that I've become massively optimistic in the last four or five years, but I will say that right now on the broader economy right now, I'm pretty pessimistic. 10 million people get laid off in two weeks. The previous record was, I think it was 600,000 in a week. Um, I think the biggest quarterly decline in GDP in recorded history is 10%. You guys can check me on that. By the way, everything I say here could be wrong. So, you know, take it for what it is. Um, this next Q2 here that we're in, they say might be 20 or 30%. So, you know, don't get me wrong. Like things are going to get better. Things will be better in the future than they were in the past. But for you, for you, for your clients, are things going to get better in the future in three years or are they going to get better in April? And I'm going to show you how you can make things better in April. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And I'm going to talk about the main topic of this video. Now, remember, I'm doing this video right now for people that are in um, my communities and are already you know clients of mine and this will make even more sense for them because they've got access to all of our materials and everything but i wanted to kind of share this in general because i think it can be helpful for people just to like open up your mind to like all right well hey even if you don't want to work with us or you're not currently working with us like life is going on out there and what are the things that people are doing okay so the topic of today is going to be advisory services during COVID-19 for tax and accounting firms. And I think the important thing to recognize here today is I can promise you that this is not a complete listing. I can also promise you that this will change and it may change within a number of days. Well, why is that? Well, if you guys haven't noticed, a lot of things be changing out there. A lot of things be changing out there, okay? But let's take a look here. Advisory services during COVID-19 for tax and accounting firms. And I put this here because I think it's it's very telling, okay? I said that, you know, there is a medical crisis going on. Obviously, this COVID-19 thing is a virus, and it is absolutely terrible, and, you know, uh, that, that we, that, you know, this is happening to people, and the effect that it has had on our society is massive. Now, whether it's the exact appropriate response, whether it's too much response, whether it's too little response, I'm too stupid to figure that out. But what we do know is that, medical professionals are putting themselves, doctors and nurses are putting themselves in harm's way, okay? They are going into many of these cases around the world, getting it themselves, some of them die. And you know that's a really tough job that I think most of us watching this here today don't have to be faced with, okay? And so doctors and nurses I think are on the forefront of this crisis. I think the second tier here is the mental health crisis, which you know a lot of people aren't talking about, but Never in human history before have we ever locked 7 billion people in house arrest. You can't imagine what that's going to do to them. I mean, I told, I said that story at the beginning, this woman, right? She's out there yelling out of her door, I'm bored, I'm bored. People will not come out of this crisis the way that they went in. And unfortunately, as much as I would like to be positive, and I am very positive for myself and for my clients and for many people out there, I would say for most people, they're gonna come out psychologically in not as good of a place as they went in. That would be for most people, okay? And you already see it. I mean, they're not facing the reality that they're living in. They're not adapting their behavior. They're not looking for the positives. And I'm gonna talk about that at the very end because some of your clients are doing this too. And how do you crack them out of that, okay? And then the third one here, I would say, you know, the medical crisis, you know, has led to the lockdowns. The lockdowns have led to the mental health crisis and the lockdowns have also led to the financial crisis. 10 million jobs have been lost in the last 14 days uh, per the jobless claims. The previous weekly record. So, so the last two weeks, I think, were 6.6 .6 million and 3.3 .3 million. The previous weekly record was 600,000. So it was five times and 10 times the previous weekly record. And what is it going to go to next week? Is it going to be? 200,000 again? No, probably not. Is it going to be 10 million? Probably not. Maybe. I, I really don't know. But the point is, it's probably going to be in the millions. So millions of people a week are losing their job. There was only 140 million people employed before this. Okay. And why are they losing their job? Well, they're losing their job because businesses don't have any revenue. Businesses don't have any cash flow. Okay, and I'm going to show you how to help your clients with that to some or to a large degree here in a minute. But if a business doesn't have cash flow, they cannot pay their employees. And I see a lot of people, 
hating on anybody trying to grow, trying to be successful, trying to succeed, trying to generate revenue, trying to generate sales, shame on you. Shame on you because you know what? The people that we need to be supporting right now are entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs that can figure out a way to pivot and get out of this thing, hire some people, take care of their own families. Okay. And so, you know, in this sort of financial crisis, I think tax and accounting professionals, and you could maybe add wealth management professionals into this, are very uniquely poised to be able to help. And because, and be, and because of these deep cuts, and then you add into that the government reaction and response, and it's a massive area, massive area of where we can help, okay? So here are sort of my thoughts on, and maybe we can even zoom in even farther here. Oh, it's a little bit too far there on service offerings during this period, okay? Now, this has changed, and I probably changed this six times in the last three weeks, so this is gonna change tomorrow. So, you know, don't take this for something that's, you know, final by any means, but I do think that, you know, when you look at this here, okay, the big thing that these businesses need right now is, you know, for those, you know, for those guys that haven't had a chance to dig into this yet, the SBA, in partnership with the Treasury and the government, in addition to local city and state governments and banks are giving out a tremendous amount of flexibility when it comes to lending. And in some instances, they're very low interest rates. In some instances, including the PPP 7A, the business owner does not have to pay back the amount that they borrow if they follow certain stimulations. Yes, you heard that right. They could borrow 600,000, they could borrow a million, they could borrow 10 million, depending on, it's a calculation based on their payroll. and they can borrow that amount of money and they don't have to pay it back in some instances. Okay, and in the very first day at Bank of America, 85,000 businesses applied for $22 billion. They've given, they're giving out 350 billion in total. I guess, my guess is that that money will be gone in somewhere between 10, you know, seven to 15 days. And I've done calculations in a previous video about why that is the case. Either way, they're good. They say they're gonna do more. And you know, when free money goes, uh, people take it. You know, I think that's that's pretty obvious. So. That is really the first thing, and that's the biggest value proposition, okay? That is the biggest value proposition right now, okay? Um, then there's also other things that we can do. There's tax credits, there's payroll tax credits, there's various types of tax incentives that came out largely as a result of the CARES Act and the, I think it's the FFCRA, Family First Coronavirus Act, something like that. Um, the CARES Act and the FFRCA, I can't remember that off the top of my head, where there's various types of payroll tax credits, tax credits, and tax incentives, where that also is a huge value proposition. Additionally, various types of other sort of COVID-19 related consulting, including cash flow management and other things. If you're not offering these three services, I mean, you're totally irrelevant. You're totally irrelevant. Totally, totally irrelevant. I see some people trying to do their marketing and like they're still talking about stuff from two months ago. It's like, guys, <laughs> this is, I know that it's abrupt. And you know, one of my clients here, Amandine says, I'm worried about what's coming. There will be millions of hungry people soon. And this is not gonna look pretty. Many business owners are still in denial. That is true. Many business owners think this is gonna be what people call a V-shaped recovery. Uh, I, I, I don't know about that. I, I don't know. I'm too, too, I can't predict the future, but I do think this is going to be more painful than most people think even as of now. They're optimistic because they want to be optimistic, but it does look like the pain is coming. Okay. So now this right here, you know, is, is something that as of right now may go on for six weeks after the very first time that you sign them up. And then after that, if you can actually save their business, I'm going to talk about various things you can do to save their business on the back end of this. Okay. Then you're going to take these clients that you get right now. And, and I got to tell you, this is the I have never seen business owners more willing to switch accountants than they are right now. It is insane. It's unbelievable. They're literally emailing their accountants and their accountants saying, just go to the SBA website. It's so easy. And um, it's not just the SBA website. It's not just the banks. And if you think it's easy, I must be a complete idiot because I got to tell you, I'm still trying to figure this stuff out. And it's very difficult. It is very difficult. Things are changing by the hour. It's difficult for me with a community of hundreds and hundreds of tax and accounting professionals researching this stuff in droves to keep up, much less for the average business owner out there that's non-technical. They're like, you know, reading Friendster trying to figure out how they're going to be able to get a 
five hundred thousand dollar loan to pay their employees. It's not. It's it's very stressful, and many of their banks are turning them away. Many of their banks will not allow them to apply. Many of their banks are no longer accepting applications. Uh, many of them are doing the calculations wrong, on and on, right? So these things are incredibly valuable and business owners right now are willing to pay for these in a way that is more fluid than anything I've seen before. Yeah, one of my clients said, uh, Chayanthi says, one of my COVID consulting clients already said they wanna switch from their current CPA every day. Every day people are switching and getting ripped off of other accounting firms because they're clueless, flat footed, their sales are gonna go down because they're, they're getting it from two angles. They're getting it because their clients are going out of business and they're getting it because their clients are getting ripped off because if you're doing, if you're doing these services right now only and you're not offering these to your clients, you could have a 40 to 60% drop in revenue over the next six to nine months. And if you don't believe that, well, let's just wait and see. Shoot me an email come Christmas. You, you send me a little Christmas update. Let me know how it goes. It ain't going to be pretty. Okay. But once they get through this, once you rip as many clients off of other accounting firms as you possibly can, when we get through this crisis, and we will get through this crisis in some form or fashion, and eventually things will be better than they were before. When we do get through this, they will be with you for tax prep, accounting, tax planning, CFO, wealth management, all the other things. And sometime over the next six to 24 months, and I think it'll probably be on the longer end of that, but who knows, we will have some return to normal spending. And, and I will tell you that over the next six to 24 months, the front end things that you're offering, most of the time we would offer tax planning or CFO services before this crisis, these things will change. They're already talking about a fourth bill, infrastructure, more SMB money. So this is all going to change. Okay. But this kind of thinking is what are you offering on the front? What are you offering on the back? What are you charging? And, and, and here's the thing. How are you helping them strengthen their balance sheet, restabilize their business and survive? And if you're not doing that and you're just telling them to fend for themselves, well, you are in for a rude awakening. And it's sad, but, you know, honestly, people that aren't doing advisory, people that don't have the advisory mentality, people that just have the compliance mentality, people that don't want to change to help their clients because they don't want to change themselves. You are not important in your business. Your client is more important than you. And you should build things and deliver things that create value for them, not things that you like to do. You are not important. Your client is important. The business is built to serve the client, not built to serve you. And if you think about that, you'll survive a lot better through these things. Okay. So what are some of the things that are going on right now? So let's, let's go through some of these. So the lending programs that are available right now as of April 5th, 2020, okay? Okay. The PPP 7A Forgivable Loan Program from the government, that is the absolute hottest one. Uh, everybody that is a tax and accounting professional, I'm recommending you provide that for free. Um, but you can get a loan fee on the back end if you work with a lender that does support that per the Treasury guidance. And I've covered some of this stuff before. Um, but a lot of people are out there saying, you can't charge for doing SBA loans. And some of these accounting firms out there are just beating that drum. And, you know, one of the reasons I've been successful in life and been fortunate enough to be successful is because I don't listen to other people. I look at the guidance. I look at the law. I look at the regulation. I look at the code. I don't listen to business insider. OK. And I certainly don't listen to some other person out there saying something with no citation. If someone tells you something today and there is no reference to a .gov website, it's not important. Until they can point you to a .gov website, they are not relevant, okay? That's the only thing I'm paying attention to right now in the tax and accounting space. And you know, there are some other questions related to banks, in which case can they send me the bank website? But in terms of law, gotta be on a .gov. And now there may be interpretations based on that .gov, but are those interpretations linked back to specific parts of .gov, whether that be the Senate site, whether that be the Treasury site, whether that be the SBA site, all these things, right? So yes, you can charge for some uh, SBA programs, but not the forgivable loans. The 7B disaster loan with a 10K advance, you can't charge for that. And I've covered that before. You can charge for that. And you just have to disclose it on the application form, your name, how much you charge, and so on. And I have not only confirmed that on their website, but I've also confirmed that through email communication with the SBA themselves. 
SBA Express. Now, I just don't think this is really a relevant program right now uh, from what we've seen. And some people have asked me about that. It's the ability to get $25,000 advance before you get your disaster loan. But it's typically run in collaboration with the banks. The problem is right now, the banks are completely focused on PPP. And PPP is a lot better because it's a forgivable loan. So you don't actually have to pay it back if you follow the guidelines. Whereas the SBA Express is like a real loan that you actually have to pay back. So I haven't spent a lot of time looking into that. Not much point at this point. These two are the main ones. Uh, that being said, we will provide guidance on this at some point, And you will be able to uh, offer that once the PPP dies down. But if I had to guess, I don't think this PPP is going to be dying down for a while. We saw that from the tr uh, tweets yesterday from the president and Secretary Mnuchin on the retweet that they will be ex they will be trying to expand the PPP 7A program uh, through Congress. State and local, uh, many states and many local governments are giving loans out as well. So are you doing lending consulting as a tax and accounting firm as an av advisory service? Should be. Should be. And somebody that says it's so easy, just go to the website. I mean, guys, <laughs> I mean, come on. It's crazy. <laughs> it's, are we, I think we're past that at this point. Okay. Payroll tax credit programs. Okay. Payroll tax credit programs. And I would say tax credits and deferrals. Okay. Payroll tax credits and deferrals. Now, some of this stuff is just getting rolled out. We have provided training on the sick employee payroll tax credit as well as the employee retention credit. Um, and there is also the ability to defer your payroll taxes 50% to 2021 and 50% to 2022. So, you know, none of this really fares well for the balance sheet of the government. You know, they are going to have a reduction in revenue. They're going to have a massive increase in debt. They're going to be printing money to do these programs, deficit explosion, you know, debt explosion. Uh, so all that is concerning to me. Um, However, you know, this is a global crisis. A lot of these other governments are doing it as well. So it'll be interesting to see how that looks in the context of everybody else doing it too. But the government's like pushing back all the deadlines, right? I mean, it's crazy. So, you know, if, if you have not taken a look at these yet, I would highly recommend doing it and, and looking at when does it apply to your client? And is it something that makes sense? You know, $2,000, $10,000 might not seem like as much as what P these people can borrow on the PPP and get forgiven. But guys, anything matters right now. And all that matters is that you save your client more than what they pay you. Okay, so tax planning, tax preparation, and I'll put tax planning and, and preparation, you know, programs that I think are really relevant right now. Uh, they can withdraw retirement penalty free up to $100,000. So they don't have to pay that, that early withdrawal penalty. And then if they pay the money back in three years, I believe they don't have to pay tax on it. So they can repay that money in uh, and they can take that up up to 100,000 for coronavirus COVID related uh, problems. Um, recovery rebate. So if they file their 2019 return, they get 2,400 married filing joint, 1,200 single. Net operating losses. So they can go back to 2018, 2019 and uh, well, they can take 2018, 2019 and 2020 losses and they can carry them back five years. Okay, so that's not going to work in everybody's case, but in some instances, that is going to make sense. Tax deadlines have been extended. So obviously, you know, there's all kinds of questions with that. You know, April 15th, this is going to be the year of tax. I mean, like I said before, this is like tax and accounting professional, just unbelievable, unbelievable amount of opportunity. The whole year is related to this industry for crying out loud at this point. So do you have an intentional plan for charging for these extensions? I still think that you should try to get 50% now, 50% when you uh, file or within 30 days, whichever is sooner. If you didn't catch that, pause it and rewind it, go back. I want you to charge 50% now for whatever tax preparation you're going to be doing and 50% in 30 days or when you file, whichever is sooner. Why? You know, you got to make your business succeed too, for crying out loud. Okay. So, you know, I mean, you're not exactly guaranteed to get out of this thing. And if their business isn't around or they're having cash flow problems, you need to collect whatever you can and you need to collect it now. We don't know where these people will be in 90 days. Okay. Now, consulting programs, I mean, obviously, we've bundled a lot of these different areas into consulting programs. But I think the other sort of general consulting one right now 
that we're going to have more resources coming on soon is really cash management and forecasting. Okay. I mean, it is just right now really difficult for a business owner to look at and say, okay, hey, what do I need to do right now? Here, here's how much money I have. Here's how much cash I have. Here's my burn rate. Here's how much I can get in forgivable loans. Here's how much I can get in other loans. How do I make sure this goes nine months, not two? Who do I need to fire? Who can I keep? What vendors can I push back? That is a lot of complicated questions. And so if you can help your clients go through and figure out how to manage cash during this time, cash is the lifeline right now. Balance sheet strength, cash on hand and cash flow. The people that have those are gonna come out of this thing owning everything, owning all the market share, owning all the businesses, owning all the prominence in the marketplace. So if you have a balance, if you have a strong balance sheet, you have cash on hand, you have little to no debt, and you have cash flow, you are going to be five to seven times beyond your competition because your competition is heading in the wrong direction while you're heading in the right direction. Okay, so key resources that we have. Now, I wanted to go through this because somebody asked me, they're like, Andrew, can we just get an update in the group? on what we have right now and where we're at. And you know, you guys know, I mean, how crazy this has been. I mean, we've been updating things. I've been doing, you know, so many posts every single day, right? We can come in here and see, let me see here. If I look at, um, in one of my communities here, I mean, guys, and I've already today been in here doing some updates, right? So you can see every day doing updates. So today we had a Bank of America email example. We updated our uh, PPP 7A calculation. Um, to give you guys the ability to, to make a judgment on, on payroll, tax, and 1099 expenses being included or excluded. Faith-based organizations are now eligible for disaster loans. And that was today so far, yesterday's uh, you know, updates, today's updates. So you know, if you guys are not following these updates here, I mean, you know, like there's so many good things. Business owners required to calculate their own payroll. The bankers aren't gonna do it for them uh, and they have to get that right. Um, how much money was actually paid out on day one. Marco Rubio's tweets, if you did not read those, oh, so good. Um, Faith-based organizations now eligible for PPP. Trump and Mnuchin tweeted that they're gonna have more funding. Um, new rules came out on affiliation. Um, SBA released a new way to look up lenders. Um, you know, fee disclosures, I put some enhanced guidance here. You know, a lot of people said, you can't charge for SBA alone. Really? Read that post. You cannot charge for the PPP 7A up front. You can receive a loan fee on the back end. However, you could charge for the 7B um, and 7A 504 that are not related to PPP. But, you know, besides the point, most of us aren't working on any of that right now. You know, and so many things. We also put out this. This is key. And this is one of our key resources. If you guys are not going into this every day. Ooh, doggy. Okay. Which banks are accepting non-customers? Which banks are accepting existing customers only? And which banks are accepting an application, but we don't quite know if it's just for customers or not. We are updating this by the hour. Also, which banks are paying agents? Okay, so this right here is one of the most valuable resources in the industry. And if you don't think that's true, you haven't seen your clients get denied for forgivable loans that they don't have to pay back. Or you haven't seen your client go to the bank and then the bank says, oh, well, you don't have a credit card account, therefore we can't work with you. Or, oh, we're overwhelmed, we just shut it down. And you go to another bank, they say, we're only working with existing customers. There are very few banks in the, in the country right now that are working with non-customers. And we are updating that by the hour. We have also updated our spreadsheet for how to calculate the PPP 7A um, forgivable loan amounts. And remember, you can't charge for this up front. You can receive a loan fee on the back end. But we've been doing this for people for free. And you can see uh, payroll tax. I, I'm sh I show the conflicting evidence. AICPA has some guidance. You know, I give the actual bill itself first off, okay? But the interpretations of the bill from the AICPA, from Marco Rubio, from the Tax Foundation, these are not exactly consistent interpretations. 1099s, okay? Do they include, do they not include? Many banks are asking for that. You know, there is very conflicting guidance on whether or not 1099s are included for the PPP 7A for a business owner, okay? So I gave you the ability to use your judgment and work with the lender on that but I show you how to do the calculation with those included or excluded, okay. So 
some key resources. Obviously, we've got all of our program materials. You know, we've got our announcements, which I just showed you. The calculator. We also put together FAQs for the CARES Act and the 7A Forgivable Loan, as well as the 7B Disaster Loan. And these, these are, I think, combined 60, 70 pages at this point. I mean, the Facebook group, amazing, right? I mean, it's a little bit overwhelmed. I was about a seven, eight hundred percent increase in the number of questions in the last three weeks from the month before because everybody is seeing massive success, massive results for the business owner clients and for their firms. So that has been totally difficult to keep up with. And we've actually hired full-time people to focus on that. Um, but even still, you know, um, getting full-time people that are technically capable of doing that and able to dedicate the time is not the easiest thing, but we've been keeping up. Marketing, all the Facebook ad templates, you know, Facebook ads, copy and, you know, image recommendations. All of that is included as well as email marketing templates. I think we've got 20 templates at this point. And really, you guys can just take anything from my announcements. I've seen you guys doing that. Take anything from my announcements and just turn it into a, um, you just turn it into an email. I mean, my gosh, I've seen a lot of you guys do that. And I think that that is smart. If you're not doing that, you should be doing that, okay? Uh, somebody asked, will this document be available? More than happy to provide this document in my communities um, after this is over. So if you are one of my clients and you're watching this video right now, then yep, I will paste it in the group. Um, sales, I uh, put together a beautiful sales deck, 60 slides. I've even been thinking about making some changes to the offer. I think there's just more value. I mean, you guys gotta understand the more confusing that this gets, you know, the sales deck right now, I think it's about 60 plus slides. Um, the more confusing that this gets, the more valuable it is. The more confusing this gets, the more valuable it is. And, you know, people don't understand that. They don't understand that, okay? So you can see here, um, you know, if you were to go down here, just, I'm not even gonna go through all this, but, you know, you guys have access to the slides, you know, if you're one of our clients. And so, I mean, when you go, somebody asked me yesterday, said, some people are doing this for $250. How do I compete with them? And I said, just go through the deck. Go through the deck, guys. You go through that deck, every single slide with the client, 60 slides, that shows the value. That shows the value. I mean, and there is immense value. I mean, guys, what is the value of helping someone get a $800,000 loan? And, oh, you helped them get $800,000 because it, when they were going to do it on their own, they were only asking for $600,000. And the bankers aren't helping because it's on them to do the calculation. So it's not just about getting a loan, it's about getting as much as you can. People don't understand that. Um, engagement letters for disaster loan consulting. Uh, you know, I mentioned that earlier, as well as just general CARES Act. And I've been thinking about adding a general COVID uh, consulting layer to the offering, which will include cash management and so on, a certain number of hours, making that a bigger fee. Uh, I'm working on that right now. Um, PPP 7A, you know, which banks are accepting applications? I mean, this is one of the most valuable resources in the entire industry. People don't understand that, you know, uh, every hour counts with getting these applications in. Things that we are doing right now to improve the program, I think I want to know a little bit more about, you know, getting really clear on what industries are accepted, you know, like uh, faith-based organizations are now accepted for PPP and EIDL, so disaster loans and forgivable loans. But there's a lot of uh, different organizations that are still denied. And so I think we need to get a little bit more clear on that to support everyone. I think the calculator, um, you know, and the key considerations, I think we could do more training on that. You know, yes, it's changing. Yes, there's competing and conflicting information out there. But I do think there are still some questions. What about guaranteed payments? Okay. And at least giving you guys the information to be able to make your own judgment and document that. It's all about a good faith effort. Okay, obviously, if you're filling out an application right now that is just blatantly wrong, then that's going to be criminal. But if you're giving a good faith effort based on the guidance and you've got documentation, you've got your opinion in a time where things are changing so rapidly, that's the best you can do right now. You have to make a good faith effort and you have to document it. Okay. How to handle clients that are in major cash crunches in terms of their payment plan, in terms of helping them. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that here in a second. Setting client expectations and dealing with troubled and complaining clients. Well, you know, first off, when you do this kind of consulting, you know, nothing is guaranteed. If your business has collapsed in revenues by 40, 60, 90%, paying an accountant a couple thousand bucks is not going to save your company. 
you, Mr. Business Owner, need to save your freaking company, okay? However, does working with that accountant increase your likelihood of strengthening your balance sheet and getting through this crisis? Uh, yeah, I think it does. And I want to talk a little bit about that right now because I want to talk about, and I, I can kind of have seen a lot of people post a lot of good things. And so I took these things from a lot of different places, some of our materials, some things I've seen in our program, some things I've seen on online. And I think these are some valuable things because when you guys are talking to your clients, you need to be an advisor to them at this point more than ever. Okay. Remember what I said, medical professionals, it's a medical crisis. Mental health professionals, it's a mental health crisis. Financial professionals, it's a financial crisis. I would say we are in the third line of defense just because I think the psych psychology is way worse than the financial because even people that are not having financial problems are having massive psychological problems. And I've seen that, you know, carte blanche. Okay. And you need to be a beacon of strength for these business clients that you have, for the people in your family, your kids and everything. And you can. And, and there's really no industry because, guys, here's the thing. You could maybe say the mental health professionals, but they're going through a certain kind of thing. If you're a medical professional right now, they're really struggling. Mental health professionals, man, they are hearing the stories. You guys here have a bit of a different angle where I think you can be the most productive and successful um, of the three simply because you're not exposed to as bad of things as the first two. Like obviously a nurse and a doctor right now are going through hell and, and, and a therapist is going through hell having to sit through these kind of therapy sessions all day. But if you're a tax and an accounting professional, this is like your moment to play your game on your turf. I mean, seriously, seriously it is. And so I listed out a couple of things here that I saw from other people and then I kind of collected myself. So I think the first thing is you got to understand and I'll even say increase revenues and cash flow. We've got to get cash in the door. And I think the very first one in here is probably the most important. If your clients have not created a COVID offer, they're dead. They're dead. They're totally dead. Okay. They need to create a COVID offer. What do I mean by that? Well, Watch TV, right? Amanda was watching TV today. She said, Andrew, every single commercial is about like something that they can offer during COVID. I said, yeah, that's smart. All of my advertising, go to my website, accountingtax.com. Go to my website, accountingtax.com. You want to see? Here it is. COVID-19 wartime response plan for tax and accounting firms. Boom. Videos, emails, ads, live streams, everything. And I think we crossed, I haven't tallied up the final numbers from last week, but we're probably at about 1,200 business owners saved between business owners, tax and accounting firms, about 1,200 in about 15 days, okay? It's going to go on for quite some time. My team said, maybe we should do 20,000. I said, let's hit 10,000 first, okay? This is real, guys. This is going on for a while. If people do not have a COVID offer, they are dreaming, you know? A lot of people think, oh, it's going to be a V-shaped recovery. It's going to be done in a month or two. This ain't going to be done in a month or two. COVID and its implications are going to be going on for 18 months. Okay. This is huge, huge. And I know you want it to be done, but you're better off not needing it to be done and rebuilding a life and rebuilding your services around this right now. Because if you will, guess what? Everybody else just dropped off a cliff and gave up. I'm going to repeat that. Everybody else dropped off a cliff and gave up. Okay. I want you to pre-sell to customers and prospects. You know, a lot of people say, I've seen some people out there, you as a tax and accounting professional, you're not an expert on loans and you don't even know how the process is going to work. So how can you sell that? Oh. <laughs> what you have to understand, guys, is that no one knows what the future holds. But the future is more uncertain now than it was before. How many people do you think sold events this year that didn't happen? Okay. The idea that you can only sell things that you know you can fulfill on 100% is not a thing. That is not a thing. Nothing is 100% anymore. Nothing is guaranteed. The question is, are you someone who's going to take care of your clients? Are you someone that is going to put every ounce of blood, sweat, and tears into helping them? Are you someone that is going to make a good faith effort to get them the outcome, 
even if the world blows up? And if the answer to that is yes, you can sell all day. Even though we don't know what's going to happen because you're selling helping. You're not guaranteeing anything, but you're selling help. You're saying, hey, I'm going to work with you through this process. And so whether it's you or it is your clients, your clients need to do that too. If you have a dentist right now, they should be pre-selling for two freaking years. Pre-sell dent. If somebody came to me right now and I had babies, little baby kids, little seven, eight-year-olds, maybe that's not a baby, whatever. I don't know how old kids are when they get braces. Pre-sell me some braces, doc. Give me a 75% discount. Get some money. Boom. Pre-sell me some braces. Pre-sell me some gift cards. Give me an opportunity. I would buy... $50,000 of airline flights right now, if they'd make it available, if I could buy across five or 10 different airlines, $50,000 of airline you know, uh, flights for my business, I'd pay for it. Let me know where to pay. You know, they, people need to be pre-selling the future, not just debt. They need to get cash flow from customers, okay? They need to consider ways to deliver, you know, or do remote fulfillment instead of in-store and on-site. Like, obviously, telehealth is a big piece of that. And we'll talk about some industries that I've seen kind of booming or problems that people are having. But what can they do? I mean, I've seen gyms go remote. Guys, the problems are even worse now than they were before for people. And all the competition just gave up. So if you're out there fighting, it's actually easier. You know, in the previous world, everybody was mentally relatively strong and everybody was relatively wealthy but now everybody's mentally weak they're mentally weak and they're financially destroyed and so it's actually easier in some ways as weird as that is if you're willing to pivot to things that actually work now that were completely irrelevant two months ago but now are the only thing that matters but if you're not pivoting you're just doing the same thing you're just gonna have a slow bleed you know can you use Shopify or some of these other e-commerce places to start selling your stuff online? Like, you know, and I'm not uh, the ultimate expert of this. I know how to work with people that are doing services, but a lot of people are doing like Shopify or let's even put in here like click funnels, you know, like, can they do it? Like, you know, can they use their energy to come up with something? I don't even know. Is it too, is it, is it capital? I don't know how click funnel spells. It's, it's, it's crazy. Right. So, you know, what can they do to start? going online with things, okay? Can they build new products? Can they build new services? We have already reinvented our entire business in a matter of a month. And I've worked pretty much every single day, every single night. I took a nap yesterday for two hours from 5 to 7 p.m. I haven't taken a nap since I was an infant, okay? Last time I took a nap, I was an infant, pretty much. I took a nap yesterday because I've been going crazy for three weeks and I almost fell over, <laughs> okay? So I get it. It's going to be hard. And, and those of you guys that are out there, if, if anybody, if I ever hear another business owner that's lucky enough to still have a business complain about not having time, I'm going to go completely ape shit. okay? How is it possible to not have time? You're locked up in your house. So make something, build something, build a new product. Can you create something, an event, or a software to sell? We launched our uh, very first piece of software. It does agreements, engagement letters, file requests, and questionnaires. I'm not going to do a demo right now, but it's pretty freaking sweet. And we released it literally last Sunday. So far, I think we've had 56 people sign up in our very first week in the middle of the coronavirus. People that, and by the way, I, I, I release it to a small group of my of our clients, right? I release it in the Seven Figure Firms group. Those of you guys that have not signed up for it, you should. It is amazing and it's only going to get better. And we've been making, and the, the we put together a little Facebook group for the people that are in there and it is just so good, okay? Somebody says, so much changing, but makes you knowledgeable about the things that are uh, of so much concern to business clients. Yeah. And if you guys want, who would like for me to do a training on my perspective on how long this is going to go? I've got some good materials that I've prepared on that just in regards to metrics and stats and things. And I, I haven't had as much time to follow it as I want, but I do have some general insights on, on that and just ways of thinking about it. No clue what will happen though. So these businesses, your business owner clients, they also have to reduce costs. You know, 
Uh, some of them have to ask for rent concessions. You know, I'm still paying my rent for my office. I'm still paying my rent for my house, okay? I'm paying rent for everything. I'm paying for services that people are not providing to me to take care of them. Some of my vendors, I've increased what I'm paying them because I'm fortunate enough to be able to do that and take care of them, okay? If you don't have to ask your landlord for rent concessions or if your client doesn't, they shouldn't. I've seen some people, some of you guys out there saying, well, I'm not going to pay my mortgage. I'm going to take advantage of that. That's not, that's not something to be proud of, okay? You're, that is hurting other people when you're okay. Now, if it gets to the point where you need to cut costs, do it. Do it. And don't be reckless. I'm not saying go out and spend money recklessly. But if you have obligations, you should take care of your vendors right now. Otherwise, people ain't going to be there to take care of you when you need it. Okay? Budget 40 to 60% and assume revenue could go down by 40 to 60%. Put together a budget. Say, what would happen if 40 to 60% of revenue went down? That's going to happen for a lot of you. That will happen to more tax and accounting firms than you can even imagine. I spoke to somebody else in the group recently. She said that in 2006, did revenue of 1.5 million. By 2009, 300,000. And I'm going to tell you right now, guys, this is worse than that was. This is worse than that was. This is global. This is across many, many, many different industries. The implications are beyond your level to comprehend because all of us have bird brains compared to the size of this problem. There have not been enough minutes for you to be alive since this crisis occurred for you to be able to process the scale of what has happened. But we know it's bad. Okay. Consider taking salary cuts. What can they do? And, you know, this is something that my team brought up too because I was bringing it up with them. I said, guys, hey, I, I got 100 grand a week of payroll. So we either all get our shit together and succeed or else that payroll ain't going to be there. Okay. I can only make 100 grand a week of payroll for so long before I can't. All right. So this is key. Well, what if you could drop your payroll? Now, for me right now, we've actually paid out. We paid out a bonus to our employees for the transition. We were fortunate enough to be able to do that, give them extra money to be able to transition themselves, their families. We've hired a couple of people since this thing happened. So we've been fortunate enough to do that. But do they need to cut salaries? Do they need to do terminations? You know, let's put that on here too. Do they need to do terminations? Staff and contractors. Or you got to have these conversations with them, okay? Strengthening up their balance sheet. This is probably the most important thing because, you know, the income statement right now is going to be very it's going to be crushed for some of these people. I've seen 90 95% reductions in revenue in many industries. 90 95% reductions in revenue. You, you can't, until you've seen those P&Ls, you can't even think about what that does, okay? I mean, the biggest thing right now is getting that 7 a forgivable loan. So I'm just going to put that in here too, just to make sure everybody knows. 7 a forgivable loan, you know, they're calling it a forgivable loan, which makes it a little bit more complicated, guys. Get a 7B disaster loan. The forgivable loan legitimately is just free money. If you follow the guidelines, you don't have to pay it back. And, and if you don't follow the guidelines, you get screwed. And we're going to see business owners get screwed, especially business owners that think, well, I can do the calculation on my own. Shoot. I'm from Oklahoma, so I can do it. I can do it. I know, I know you judge me. Andrew, why are you making fun of me? Uh, hickory, right? I'm from the backwoods of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Jenks, Oklahoma. I've been there. I had a, a hickory accent myself until I moved to the New York of cities, and I lost it. Guys, they need to strengthen up their balance sheet, okay? They need to do everything in their power to collect any AR that they have, and they need to do it right now because every day that goes by, that AR is dying. It is dying. They need to sell off any assets that they have for cash, anything they have. Any assets they have, sell it for cash, okay? Here are some sort of areas of opportunity and industries that are still working okay so if they can pivot their business into any of these things these things are not only working they're growing they're exploding 
Okay. These are, these are exploding opportunities, areas where the willingness to pay is beyond anything you've ever imagined. So people are working from home. So if you could do anything related to that, okay. Online shopping, I think is up 30%. Guys, online shopping is huge. 30% is huge. People are trying to exercise at home and remote. I've seen a lot of gyms providing consulting services to people doing at home trainings. We've got, uh, we hired our old personal trainer to do group trainings for our entire company in the mornings. I'm telling you right now, when it comes to connecting people, I can't wait. Someone's going to figure that out. And I would say, you know, friends, but also dating. Somebody's going to figure out dating in this era of social distancing. Telehealth. Guys, if you are not providing, I mean, I got, I got a woman, she's watching this right now, I think, Julie Harris, who is providing services to therapists. I mean, that is a boom. I said, I said, Julie, she, she came into this crisis doing 70 grand a month in sales. Great woman. I said, if you're not coming out of this thing doing 200 grand a month in sales, I'm not even going to talk to you. I said, you're not even allowed to be in the community. I said, not only are there all these consulting opportunities, your industry is going through a boom. Okay. Obviously, delivery. I mean, every, we have somebody that we were working with who helps uh, companies be consultants to Amazon for delivery. Her, her firm, booming. Helping these restaurants get online, right? How can you or how can your clients help restaurants get online? Video games are in a surge. Virtual office space. What do I mean by that? Well, our team is actually in the process of implementing a little virtual office. If you guys haven't looked that up, Google it. There's a lot of different companies. I think Remo is one. Sococo is another where you can see if your people are online, if they have their headphones in, if they're going to the bathroom. It's kind of interesting. Real business right now. Virtual conferences. Virtual conferences. Huge. I see people right now doing webinars like these webinars. Account I've seen people do what accounting firms do webinars. Literally hundreds of appointments at the end. Okay. How can your clients do a virtual conference to bring their business back? Imagine right now you're a contractor and you launch a whole process on how to COVID proof your house for safety, security, and survival by teaching people how to do it. What if you taught people how to set up TVs in their house? What if you taught people what to order to fix problems? What if you taught people what to order to fix things that people aren't going to have somebody come out to their house to do? I don't know. Get creative. They need to get creative. Lawyers and accountants. Absolute explosion in that industry, unlike anything I've ever seen. Unlike anything I have ever seen. Okay, so here are some thoughts for mindset. And this is really the most important thing because at the end of the day, the people that are going to win this thing are going to win it between your two ears. This is mostly a psychological game at this point. 8,000 people have died, 9,000 people died in the US, 68,000 people died worldwide as of today. There's 7 billion people on the planet. The health issue is bad, but it's nowhere near the scope of the mental health issue and the psychology. This is a psychology game. So the first thing I put on here is to develop a wartime mentality. You need to get militant. Kids do not run the household anymore. Now, I can say that as a non-parent. No, you, no, you don't get to do what you think you get to do. You get to live on our rules until this thing is over, okay? We tell you what to do. We tell you to get up, you get up. We tell you to go to sleep, you go to sleep. We tell you to jump, you say how high. We tell you to get in the car, you get in the car. You do exactly what we say when we say. It's a dangerous time, guys. And it's a dangerous time for physical safety from the virus, but also from the people. There's a lot of different dangers, and we don't know where it's going. 10 million people get laid off in two weeks. You know, you, you people can't comprehend what's coming. So you need to make sure that you are physically protected. Your family is physically protected. I see people just like, oh, you know, I'm going to go out to the grocery or they, they go, no, they go to the grocery, right? If, you, if you're fortunate enough to be able to, to, to order to your house, you should, right? I see people that are just going to random stores for no reason. Okay. That's stupid. That's stupid. This is not going to be a safe place in, in the way that it has been for most of your life. Now, there's no war going on outside. But there are a lot of similarities to war in this situation. And so you need to treat it that way. You need to be willing to put every ounce of energy every single day, wake up early, work the weekends, do whatever you can to save your freaking business. And you need to get 
everybody in your family on board, your spouse, your kids. Okay. You need, you need to get your clients on board. You need to get your employees on board. Oh my God. If employees think, well, I don't have time for that. Screw you. All you have is time. <laughs> you know, and maybe we don't say screw you. Right. But you know what I'm saying? Right. They have a ton of time guys. None, you know, my people have not complained to me throughout this whole thing. People have taken it in different ways. But I told them right up front, I said, nobody can complain. Nobody can complain. If you have a job, you can't complain. Because i tell you what people don't understand right now. Every single employee that still has a job is interviewing right now. Hey, everybody's up for re-interview. Now, I, I don't want you guys, everybody that's in my community, in my groups, you do whatever you can to fight to not terminate any of your people, especially not for anything other than cause. But every day is an interview right now. Because I tell you what. There are amazing tax and accounting professionals just lost their job because their firm was not strong enough to succeed that are knocking down your doors. The people that you can get right now are 10 times better than they were two months ago. And so everybody needs to get on board and your clients need to develop a wartime mentality too. They need to treat it intensely. Okay. I also, you know, you need to tell your business owner clients and you yourself as well to spend thoughtfully. You do want to spend still because there are going to be some deals and there are going to be some opportunities to go on offense. I'm spending slightly more money now than I was before, but not crazy. But I knew I needed to, to go a little bit on offense, but not, an, not so much offense that I put myself at risk. But you need to spend thoughtfully which means you probably need to spend a little bit more than you had before. If you're in tax and accounting, now there's some industries where you're just in cost cutting dead, dead, dead zone, right? But if you're in tax and accounting, you need to spend a little bit more, but you need to be thoughtful about it. You need to be prepared for things to get worse. Guys, here, here's the thing you have to understand. You have to have a mentality that if things get better, you're going to get better. And if things get worse, you're going to do better. I'm going to put that on here, okay? Put that on here. You need to have a mentality like this. And this is key. Not a lot of people can do this. If things get better, I get better. If things get worse, I get better. Hello. Hello. If you're not thinking like this, if your happiness, if your success, if your financial security is based on that geopolitical, ge you know, the, the entire global economy, the virus counts, you are so screwed, okay? You are so screwed. So no, if things get worse, I get better. If things uh, get better, I get better. Two ways to win, no way to lose, okay? And let's actually add another. If things stay the same, I get better. So ask yourself what that would look like, okay? And then just freaking do that. And you need to get your clients to do that too. This is how people need to be thinking, okay? Be prepared for 18 plus months of economic hardship. I am no genius. I am certainly not able to predict the future, but I think that if you think that it's more likely that we're going to be done with this in a month than it is we're going to go 18 months, you are living in la la land. I could be wrong. Hope I'm wrong, but this seems like a long-term issue. I mean, and if you listen to smart people, right? I listen to three groups of people, billionaires. Okay. And let's actually put that on here as another one. Who to listen to. Okay. Who do you listen to? I'll talk about that in a second. You need to demand more from everyone. Spouse, kids, dog, employees, clients, vendors. You need to, you know, if you're lucky enough to be in this industry, you've just risen to the top of the dog pile. And it is a dog pile, but you're on top. And, and But the only way you stay on top is if you stay on it. Because most people, even in your industry, are in the dog pile. Okay? And you're not guaranteed to stay at the top of the dog pile unless you fight. And, and, and. In order to do that, you need to constantly be demanding every hour of every day. Some of my people have slipped during this, coming down on them like a ton of bricks. Guys, you cannot afford slippage right now. 
You don't know what's going to happen in 60 days. You know, think about where we were 60 days ago. Could you ever imagine it would get this bad? Now, imagine how bad you think it could get in 60 days. And then what if it gets way worse than that? And I'm not saying I think that could happen, but I never thought this would happen for crying out loud. So I don't know what's coming, but people need to be on their A game every hour. And I know some people are exhausted. I've seen people in the group, you guys are working. The work ethic I've seen from the people in our community, it is unbelievable. That's the best thing to come out of this crisis. You know, this showed you what you're really made of. The rest of the time, you're just slacking, right? <laughs> so everybody needs to think about how they can come become the COVID-19 version of themselves, okay? What does that look like? Who do you need to be to get through this time? I already committed to my people, my wife, my employees, my community. I'm not going to have a bad day through this thing. I'm not going to do it. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not going to get angry. That doesn't mean I'm not going to yell. That doesn't mean I'm not going to get fussy. But I'm not going to have a bad day. What do I mean by that? I'm not going, oh, this sucks, man. Freaking coronavirus has got me locked in my house, man. This is so bad. I just want to play golf. I just want to go on a vacation. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Boring, boring. We live pretty sweet lives right now. You got an internet. You got TV. You got air conditioning. You got a car. You can still leave your house if you need to. You got Amazon, for Christ's sake. Life is great compared to like any time in human history. You just can't leave your house. So just can it. It's not that bad. And if you start to look at how things could be interesting, oh, it can be interesting. And, you know, if people around you are bringing you down and telling you it can't, just get them gone. Get them gone. I can tell you there are people throughout this whole thing. I ain't going to talk to them. Not going to talk to them. You can't talk to you. Not talking to you. Poison. What you're saying is not real. It's only in your mind. There is a way out of this. There is a way to be a better person through this. And you're not going to do that. So I'm just not going to talk to you. I, I heard a couple of great questions from this guy in an interview the other day. He said, you know, these two, these two questions right here were the ones that he asked. He said, ask yourself what won't change. What's not going to change? What are things that people are still going to need? People are still going to need food. People are still going to need internet. What are things that people are still going to need? And then ask yourself what must change. And when I heard those two questions, I was thinking, gosh, you know, I need some time to think about all this. Because it seems to me like we're going to be coming out on the other end of this thing in a different world. I mean, think about it. Think about it. Wow, right? I mean, think about this world right now. Think about, think about the freaking hotels. Think about the cruise ships. Think about travel. Think about malls. Think about airlines. I mean, what is all that going to look like? And we don't know, but we can kind of start to think about it and start to think about what those implications are for our, us and our business and, and where we might want to park our prosperity. I, I came up with a couple of other good questions here when I kind of cracked into this kind of thinking. You know, what is possible now that was not possible before? What can you now do that was not possible before? I'll give you a big one for everybody on this call. Hiring great people. Ho, ho. The people that would never talk to me, now they're coming. Because if you have cash on hand, you have balance sheet strength, you have no debt, and you have cash flow, people want to be a part of that. So if you can succeed in this time period, you're going to get people that didn't want you in other times or didn't know about you because they weren't looking. But they can be a part of this, and you can take them off the unemployment line during the coronavirus. That's pretty sweet. So there's many things that are possible now that weren't possible before, but your ability to acquire talent is unlike any time in the history of your life right now. You know, what is the world going to look like in 18 to 36 months? What is it going to look like? 
We don't know. Many things are going to change. But ask yourself that question. I think that, you know, that's one of the reasons I'm so fortunate that we've been developing Core V for so long. I mean, it's, it's literally built to do all of client collaboration, remote engagement letters, agreements, questionnaires, file requests, 100% remote. We got so lucky that we've been working on that. Like, and now we get to release that in the middle of the freaking coronavirus. I mean, I'm so fortunate that that, that kind of timed up. I mean, I was not smart enough to know that, obviously. It just happened by chance. But people are going to be much more remote. They're going to come out of this with totally – eventually this whole virus thing will be gone, right? Life will go completely back to normal, but that's going to take some time. So what is that going to look like? Start panning that out. Start thinking about it. Start dreaming it and start thinking about who you want to be in that world three years from now. How big are your sales going to be? How many team members are you going to have? What services are you going to offer? Who are you going to be helping? What industries are you serving? What problems are you solving? Fun stuff to think about. This is my personal favorite question. I've, this is my best question I've come up with through this whole thing. What would my life look like if it was better two months from now than two months ago? If we get to June and my life is the best at, that it's ever been in the month of June 2020, and it's better than it was in February 2020, what would that look like? That is the most important question right now for you. And, you know, I've, I, I thought of it because I was like, well, is everybody's life going to get worse? Like, is everybody's life going to get worse? No, probably not, right? Seven billion humans on the planet. Like, probably some people's lives are going to get better. So why can't I be one of those people? And what would it look like for me to be one of those people? And I'm working on building that every freaking day. Okay, last thing I want to go over here is who to listen to. Now, obviously you're here and I've been very, you know, great great I'm very grateful to you to sit here and listen, you know, to me and some of my stuff on a Sunday afternoon. But who to listen to? Here are three groups of people that I listen to. I listen to billionaires because they're good at judging reality and predicting the future. I listen to, um, I guess you could say, you know, medical professionals, specifically in the area of sort of the virus and virology and epidemiology and all these things. Okay. And because they are niche specific knowledge experts on this. And so I think they're good to listen to. And then the last one I listen to are, um, you know, politicians really, because they are signaling the direction of social policy. Okay. Signaling the direction of social policy. People I don't listen to, you know, I don't listen to, um, I don't listen to just random family members. Okay. I don't listen to kids really. Um, I mean, kids are great, but like, you know, they have no idea what's going on. They have no idea what's going on. Uh, Liz says, do we have a new deck for advisory services? Well, we do. I mean, if you look at the deck right now, 60 slide deck for lending consulting and CARES Act consulting. So I would use that on every single call. But I don't listen to kids. I don't listen to random family members. I don't listen to kids. I don't listen to the broke brother-in-laws, right? I don't listen to complainers. I don't listen to people that are whining and missing their old life. I don't miss I don't wait I don't listen to people that are waiting for things to get better. I don't listen to people that aren't adapting. And you know guys, I'm not promising that I've got the best way to get through this thing, but I think this will provide you just with some of my insights and some of my thoughts on you know how to think about getting through this whole mess and having some freaking fun while we do it. And maybe, just maybe, getting out on the other side better than how you went in. So if you guys did not get a chance to watch this whole video, I think it was a good one. If you guys are one of my clients, I will go ahead and post this in the group. Um, this is, I put my blood, sweat, and tears into this thing. So have my team members, so has my wife. I mean, 
literally every waking minute since this thing started to become a real sort of economy killer. And if I had to make a prediction, I would say we are in the first 5% of the time period that this information is going to be valuable. This is going to go on for quite some time. And it's going to go on multi-year. Um, even if we get out of the virus and they let people out in a month or two, the economic effects are going to go years. So strap on a helmet and let's get to work. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and end this live stream. If you guys have any questions in the meantime, Facebook group is the best place to go. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and we'll talk soon.